In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to send purchase orders and receiving costs within BuildExact. Specifically, we're going to begin by talking a bit about the difference between purchase orders and work orders. We're going to go through a couple examples today that are going to include sending a purchase order, how to receive the bill or invoice, and throughout the chat today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the accounting integration. Now, to begin, we land here on the actual costings, and before we go through our examples, I want to begin by talking a little bit about the difference between purchase orders and work orders. As I know in industry, they have a number of connotations and uses, uses but in BuildExact, we have very specific examples as to what we want to use as a purchase order versus what we want to use as a work order. And it really comes down to this. If the cost is an external cost to your business, so that could be, you know, you're getting a bill or an invoice or you're paying with credit card or something along those lines, then we want to make sure that we use the purchase order. Whereas work orders are meant for internal costs. So examples could be machinery or equipment that you own, you want to cost to a job or uh, for things like uh, out tracking hours or uh, labor costs for employees that you directly employ. That'll go through the work order flow. Now, today we're focusing on purchase orders, but the work order flow is actually very similar to this, and we do have a separate video on it if you're curious. But as we focus today on purchase orders, those external costs and receiving them, we're going to go through three separate examples. Now, three separate examples are really just going to help us look at some very common situations, but as you'll see, they really follow a very similar path. So to begin, we start on the actual costing screen, and let's look at actually how we raise a purchase order for an item we want to begin to order. So I'm going to come down here to say my windows and I'll go ahead and open it up. And the actual costings really just emulates the estimate costings. So specifically in my estimate, I've quoted this item. So now I want to go ahead and raise a purchase order for it. So I'll give the item a click. And once I've gone through and selected all the items I want to, I want to raise for that one purchase order, I'm going to hit the order button here at the bottom. Now into this screen, which we're going to be able to fill in some information for our purchase order, we're going to start by giving it a description. This description is really just for internal use only, uh, and it's really just giving you that ability to look back on a whole bunch of purchase orders and quickly find the one you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just call it Windows for now. I'm going to go ahead and assign a contact now, and if I don't have the contact in there, uh, then I can actually go ahead and add them in as a new contact here. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and select from an existing contact. From there, you'll see the delivery address will be filled in. Now, if your delivery address hasn't been filled in, then you can go back either to the job details or the estimate details and fill in the works location. And we have separate videos on that. I can mark the item as pickup if I want. And down here, purely optional, but I have the ability to mark the date required and provide any further instructions that I may want to pass along with this particular purchase order. Further along here and at the bottom, we're going to get the description, the quantity, and the cost of the items that has been pulled in from the actual costings into my purchase order. And now I can begin to change it. So perhaps I was maybe a bit vague about the actual item that I wanted to order. Now I can go through and specify more specific details about what the item is. Perhaps I quoted something, but maybe I need to change that to a slightly different item now. I'll link back to the same line item. But I have the ability to change the description, the quantity, if I need to. And cost isn't as important important for reasons you'll see in a moment. Uh, but again, this is really just giving you that ability to then edit it to make sense for the supplier or the purchase person receiving it. Quick point to note here is that the costs by default don't show on the purchase order. However, you can change that by clicking this little button on. So some examples where some people will show the cost when printing is for things like subcontractors or if the item has previously been um, sent for a request for quote, so the price has been agreed upon. Uh, so just a quick note about that. But for this example, and I know most people, they usually don't show costs on the purchase order. Now, once I have that ready to go, I can go ahead and hit save and send, and that would then allow me to email the purchase order out of BuildExact directly. But what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to go ahead and just change the status from unsent to sent. I'm going to go to the bottom and hit save and close. And now I want to just touch on a couple things here as we venture over to look at the purchase order. Chief amongst which is that once the purchase order has been rolled in, then this little item will appear on the order section. So letting me know that, oh, yeah, I raised that purchase order. So really, really helpful just to make sure you or somebody else in your business doesn't actually double order items, which we know can sometimes happen, but should be easily avoided because by checking this. Next up, we're going to jump over to our purchase order screen where we've raised our first purchase order. I'm going to hit the little print order button here and render the document off in a PDF and we can take a quick look. 
And just like that, there's my purchase order. Quick point I'll make here is the terms and conditions. This is editable. So going back into Build Exact, we're just in our purchase order screen. And under the cog here, we're going to have our manage terms and conditions where we have a separate set of terms and conditions for suppliers as well as contractors. Um, quick point that you are absolutely welcome and encouraged to review and edit this as you may need, including putting your own in. But we certainly uh, recommend you to do that uh, before you send over your first purchase order. So now we're going to say, great, we've sent our first purchase order out. And now we're going to go ahead and receive a bill for that cost. So now to record that cost against this purchase order, there's a couple different ways to get into this next screen, but I'm going to access to record the cost by simply opening it up. And now I'm going to change the status here from sent to received, i.e. I received a bill. From here, we get this screen, which we sometimes refer to as our accounting screen, because what we want to do here is we want to begin to fill in information like the reference number. This would be just like the bill number or something like that and put in the invoice and receipt date. Now, chief among switch is really that this information here is primarily wanted by your accounting system. So this, once we go ahead and mark either of these buttons at the bottom, then this, uh, this receipt will be added into the integration queue, ready to be synced across to your accounting system. If you are curious about that, we do have some more videos on that um, to dig into in our help center. For now though, what Build Exact is gonna say is, okay, great. I ordered 20 items as a part of the original. How many did I get at what cost? And for this example, I'm going to actually change the price. I'm going to say I actually got it for a few dollars cheaper. And at the bottom, I can either mark it as received. And that basically just indicates I don't expect to get any more bills against this later on. Or I can mark it as part received. And the whole goal of this is really just to flag and tag the item as either received. So you can look at the variance and you might then see you've saved a couple bucks. And so that marked as received just lets you know, hey, that's probably money that's going to be yours at the end of the day. Or if you've marked it as part received, that really, again, just indicates to say, hey, you've spent some money, but potentially you may get some more bills later on for that item. For this ex first example, I'm going to mark it as received. Scrolling down, that's going to put an invoice and receipt against this order. I'm going to hit save and close and navigating back to the actual costings. You'll then see that the right hand side of the actual costings will then automatically fill in. So now I can very clearly see on the left how much I estimated versus how much I actually bought. And you can see I've spent, I've saved a little bit of money, specifically $260. I've spent 96% of the line item. And that will also then bubble up into the category costs as well and the overall job expenditure. So that's our first example out of the way, but let's go ahead and say that there's going to be any number of examples where potentially you're not going to send a purchase order out. And so the first time you're really going to be interacting with the actual costings is in a situation where you actually have a bill for that item. So for that example, we're going to go ahead and basically start exactly the same way. Let me grab, say, my plumbing, and I'm going to go ahead and tick the item and hit order it at the bottom. We're still going to go ahead and give it a description. I'll just call it plumbing for now, and we're going to assign a contact. The real difference here is that because I don't need to send out a purchase order, I've just got a bill in my hand, all I'm going to do is just change the status now from unsent right to received. And from here, our process really just repeats. I'm going to put a reference number in. I could change the invoice and receipt date. But down here, I'm going to tweak this up a little bit more. And let's say that our plumber is going to bill us you know, more than once, essentially. They're going to come on site, do some work. Then they're going to come back a few weeks or a few months later and basically finish the job. So I can effectively edit the quantity and the cost to reflect what my actual invoice says. Let's just say they're going to bill me for 50%, i.e. 0.5. This side doesn't really matter too much in terms of how you get these figures in. What matters is that invoice total reflects the invoice total that you've received. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and mark the order as part received because I, again, I expect I'm going to get another bill for this later on. So we'll mark it as part received. It's going to add now the invoice and receipt onto this item. We're going to hit save and close. And now back here in the actual cost statement, I can see, yeah, look, that's what I estimated. That's what I've spent so far. So of course I've spent about 50% so far. And you can, you can see again, the category costs are coming alive. So now we're going to jump on our time machine. We're going to go forward a little bit. And now we're going to have a second bill in our hand. And so now we want to record the final um, progress payment cost for this item. And so again, different ways to get into this screen, but I'm gonna start by maybe taking the item ordered and then opening the order up this way. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm just gonna add another invoice and receipt here. And really just repeating the same process. 
Now here, let's uh, let's say that maybe there's a bit of a mistake or something like that, and they're just going to get a, a bit of a discount. So, i.e., we're only going to bill us for the remaining 45%. Again, this side doesn't matter as much. What does is that the invoice total here reflects what you've actually been invoiced. And now I'm going to mark the order as received to, again, indicate that I don't expect to get any more bills against this later on. Hitting save and close, and now again, checking back the actual costings. And same thing, now you can see that because I've only spent 95%, I have a positive variance of $662.72. Now, in our final example today, we're going to go ahead and just look at the fact that so far in the previous two, we've started from the actual costing. So clearly, we have estimated that item. But there's going to be some examples where you know that potentially you're going to get a cost for an item that you haven't maybe estimated for. And so therefore, we don't have an item to pick up uh, from the actual costings. So in those situations, we're then going to navigate to the purchase order screen. And we're effectively going to raise sort of what we refer to as a naked purchase order, i.e. it's going to be the same process here. Uh, I'll just say I did a, a timber run or something like that. I'm going to supply it to a contact. But Specifically, because I didn't pick these items up from the actual costings, I need to go ahead and tell Build Exact, well, what did I actually buy? And I'm going to chuck two different examples in here. I'm just going to say, I, you know, I just bought some timber. And I'll say I bought a lot of $500 or $5,000. Uh, you can certainly edit this in a more broken down way if you want, maybe the number of items and the cost per item. It's really up to you. But what I need to do now is I need to tell Build Exact where do I want those costs to be allocated to? We need to give them a home. So I'm going to put them into ground floor framing. And here I'm going to say, look, while I was also there, maybe I bought, um, say, $250 of miscellaneous items as well. And again, I could further break this down if I want to. But what I want to mention here is that when you do get those miscellaneous or those true unaccounted for costs, we know many people will want to go ahead and put them back into an existing category, and that's completely okay. But one thing we recommend is that you can actually create brand new categories by just simply typing in here. And it really just allows you to basically sort of quarantine those costs, making it easier to look back at the end of your job and, and see very clearly potentially where some of those miscellaneous or contingency or unanticipated costs potentially may have arrived. So finishing here, we're going to go ahead and change the status now right to receipt because, again, we've got the bill in our hand. If we actually were sending the purchase order out, we can mark it as sent, but I'm going to go right to the receive stage. Again, putting in the reference, the bill number. I shouldn't need to edit these figures because I entered them in a moment ago, and we're going to mark it as uh, received because that's the one and done cost for these items. Now, going back to actual costings, what you're going to see here is if I go back up to my ground floor framing, Effectively, what's going to happen is because I didn't pick the item up from the actual costings, Build Exact is going to add a new line, line 6.5 for the item. And it's not going to have an estimated value in there, but it will have the actual total. So in that case, I'm really then looking at the category and drawing down upon that, keeping my eye on my budget here. And for that miscellaneous items, if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see category number 30 here will be brand new. If I open that up, same thing. This item is brand new with no budget, but it will have an actual total in there. And again, just making it very easy for me to be able to track a lot of those miscellaneous uh, costs from that. And that's how to send purchase orders and receive your external costs.